start out with a few questions, like I usually do, just to get us thinking about what our lesson is going to be talking about today. So my first question is, is it difficult for you to be open with others about areas of sin in your life? In other words, if you're really struggling with something and you keep sinning and keep doing the same sin over and over again, is it hard for you to go to somebody else and say, I am really having a hard time with this? Next question, is it important to be open and honest with others about when we are sinning or when we are struggling? I want you to think about that while we are are talking about our lesson today. We are going to start in John chapter 1, and then we're going to go to John chapter 3. But first, let's just go to the Gospel of John chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. Um, And this takes place... uh, John has been preaching. Jesus has come to him. He's been baptized. He's gone out to the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by the the devil. And now he's come back. And so this is when this happens. And so we're going to start reading in John chapter 1, 29 through 34. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit coming down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So, in verse 29, what does John call Jesus? The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. What does that mean? In that culture, in that context, he's talking to Jewish people. What would it mean to be the Lamb of God? Like, in their Jewish religion, what did they use lambs for? Sacrifice. The sacrifice of sin. They sacrifice a lamb to remove the sin from their life. What does it mean when it says he he takes away the sins of the world? And also in verse 29, it says the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Does he take away the sin of the world? Do people still sin? Is there still sin in the world? Yes. So what does this mean? What does it mean that he takes away the sin of the world if we still have sin in the world? Have you ever heard of phantom pains? Like when someone has their arm or leg amputated, um, they can still feel like pain or even itchiness in that arm or leg that has been removed. Have you ever heard of that? It's called phantom pains. And so even though, let's say I get my arm cut off for medical reasons, even though I don't have that arm anymore. I may still feel like it hurts or it itches. Okay, you with me? This is a good example of how God and Jesus remove sin and the penalty of sin from the world. Okay, like the arm is gone. But the pain of it is still there. Jesus has removed all of your sins. All of them. If you have given your life to Christ, he has removed all of your sins. But you may still have pain in tempt, like in the way of temptation. Does this make sense? It's a, it's a mindset. It's a, are you a sinner? Or have you, has your sin been completely taken away from you? And it's only phantom pains that you're struggling with temptation. 
I think, um, I think sometimes it's our mindset that we're, well, I'm, I'm human. I'm only human. I can't be perfect. So Jesus has come to take away the sins of the world. He wants to take away your sins far. And it says he removes them far from the, as the East is from the West. Let him know in yourself, know and believe that your sins are gone. And that the temptations and the wanting to do those things are just phantom pains from something that has been removed from you. It's a different mindset than saying, I am a sinner, but I'm saved. Than saying, I am sinless because God has taken my sins away from me. Okay? It's a it's an important mindset. God removes, Christ removes the power of sin from us so that we are not under sin's power anymore. We can either be alive in Christ or dead to sin. Those are the options. Let's be alive in Christ. All right. So in John chapter 3, we go, uh, John chapter 3, verses 25 through 30. We're going to move on to John chapter 3, verses 25 through 30. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. Then John replied, a person can receive only what is given to them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. So John has been preaching, and people have come from all over everywhere to come see him and hear him preach. Now Jesus is preaching. And Jesus is teaching, and people are going to him. And so John's disciples come and say, you know that guy that, that you were with on the other side of the Jordan? Everyone is going to him now, and, and they're listening to him teach. And they seem to be a little bit upset by this. And, and what do you think John's reaction is? Let's look at the end of verse 29 and verse 30. How did John respond? He said, that joy is mine and is now complete. I am joyful, like completely joyful for him. I must become less. He must become greater. Why does he, how does he respond to that? Why does he respond that way? What was his mission? To point others to Jesus. If people that come to listen to him don't start going to, to listen to Jesus, he's not doing a good job. His mission was to point others to Jesus. It's tempting sometimes to get distracted from our mission. Our mission is to point others to Jesus. Wherever they need to go to find Jesus, that is our mission is to get them there. Sometimes it is to come and listen to us talk. I'm a Bible teacher. I pray and hope that I am pointing you guys to Jesus every day and all of the, the things that I say. But if I'm not, I want you to go somewhere where you are pointed to Jesus. Does this make sense? And so John says, I've done my job. I've pointed people to Jesus and people are going to Jesus. They don't need to come listen to me anymore. Our job here on earth, is to point others to Jesus in every way that we can. Have you ever experienced a time where you intentionally made yourself less 
so that Jesus could be greater. And how did that, um, how did that go? How did that make you feel? Were you happy and glad that people saw Jesus instead of seeing you? I think you would be. And then we'll keep reading in John chapter 3, verses 31 through 36. The one who comes from above is above all. So who's the one that comes from above? Jesus. Okay, so he's talking about Jesus. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives the Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Okay, let's just look at verse 36. And I'm going to read it one more time, and I want you to think about what it means. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. So who is the Son? Jesus. So whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. So who has eternal life? The one who believes in Jesus. Who does God's wrath remain on? The person who rejects Jesus. Or in another translation, the person who does not obey Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? I think most of you, most of you would say yes. Do you obey him? I think we struggle sometimes with, well, I try to, or uh, sometimes, I mean, I want to. We need help with this. We need help with obedience. You know what? We have help. It's called the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Comforter. He helps us. We can try everything on our own and we can't do it. We are never going to be good enough. We are never going to be obedient enough. But the Holy Spirit comes and He helps us. He gives us joy. Joy that we get to do things to serve the Father. I want you guys to pray. Pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you up and to guide you. And I want you guys to be open about struggles and sins that you have in your life so that other people can pray for you. It's important. It's important. Like we are broken, broken people. None of us are good enough. And so you could look at John the Baptist and say, but he was so good and that's how he pointed others to Jesus. No, he was a broken, sinful man, just like just like we are broken, sinful people. But he pointed people to Jesus. If we are open and allow our brokenness to point others to Jesus, say, this is where I was. And then Jesus came and this is where I am now. Or I am still struggling with this, but I know that God loves me and is helping me to get here. Does this make sense? Pray, pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you up so that you can use your life, your pain, your brokenness, and also your excitement and your joy and your enthusiasm for the Lord to lead others to Jesus. Because that's our job. I'm sure some of you can think about people who have led you to Jesus, pointed you toward Jesus. 
Who are the people that you have pointed toward Jesus? There should be some. If you have not ever pointed anyone to Jesus, that's my challenge for you. Point others to Jesus. Intentionally, specifically, choose someone. Pray for them. Pray how well, that you would follow how God is going to lead you to point them toward Jesus. And then be bold enough to do it. Pray and then point. That's my challenge this week. I hope you guys have a great week.